Hello! Today I'm going to be putting together this little kit. Unfortunately, I can't tell you what it is because when it came, it had no instructions. It just came with the parts and the circuit board. Well, I say I can't tell you what it is. I'm suspecting that it's just a digital clock, but that's just from looking at the parts. But I don't know. I can't remember what I ordered and I deliberately didn't go and check to see what I had ordered because I thought it'd be quite interesting just to build it and see what happens. So let's have a look at what we've got. We've got a, a couple of resistors, a resistor network I believe that's called, which is just a number of resistors um, put together in a package so there's there's one two three four five six seven eight nine legs on that so that means that there's one common leg and eight resistors so if i get my little tester here just put that into ohms we can just check that let's stick that there you should be able to see that and then if we just move these items the way if we I'm assuming that the I don't know if you can see that but the there's a little dot there I'm assuming that that's the common leg so if I put my probe on that and then on one of the other legs you can see that that's 470 ohms and if I do it on the next leg along that's also 470 ohms and I don't need to go eat through all of them, but each one is 470 ohms. Now, what's the difference between? I'm assuming these legs. Yeah, so that's one kilo ohm. Hmm, one kilo ohm. Yeah, I don't know how they're constructed internally, but there's obviously a reason for that. Anyway, it's one of those. All of these resistors look to be the same now. They're five band resistors which are a pain uh, it's yellow purple black so from memory my memory is not great um no i can't remember what yellow is uh, do i have my little guide of what resistor colors mean yellow is four purple is seven so four seven and black is zero. So that's four hundred and seventy. And then brown. It's a multiplier which is ten. So is that four seven zero zero? So that's four point seven kilo ohms, I think. Put away my chart. Um, but let's test that on the multimeter shall we Just put that there and that there we get 4.7 kilo ohms I think that's what I said <laughs> okay um, we've got a capacitor electrolytic capacitor another one a switch oh two switches Something to connect the cables to. Two diodes. What kind of diodes are these? Sevens. Um, a crystal, which is marked at 12.000, so that's 12 megahertz, I believe. Um, a couple of ceramic capacitors. And then a little transistor. Or a little transistor package which says on it I can't see that get my little magnifier out that is S8550 I believe no idea what that does I'm not gonna look it up because I want it to be a surprise and a microchip AT89C2051-24BU at Mel. 
we'll look these all up afterwards once we've built it um, we've got the four digit seven segment display IC holder and a little buzzer uh, I don't know if this is a passive one or a an active one so I can test that actually if I use got a little CR 2032 here and if I put that across there okay. I don't know if you can hear that um, that's a active buzzer which just means there's circuitry in there that oscillates when a, a voltage is put across the pins which causes the uh, the sounder to to buzz and then we've got the circuit board so um, as I say there's no instruction leaflet included with this but it does list on the the circuit board all of the component names so that we know where to put things okay so let's turn it over it's quite a simply laid out board there let's be fine well the the soldering iron has been heat, heating up. I shall uh, put that over there. Um, so let's let's start up. I've got some solder here. Um, I do have my helping hands. Should we need to hold the circuit board at any point? I should just put that over there. Um, but to begin with, I think we'll probably place the yes the resistors in place um, so there's one there one there one there and two there that's the five that we've got so let's cut these out these are those what can only be described I suppose as really cheap resistors the uh, legs on them are very very thin um, I don't know if I can show you that I've got some other resistors here that I, uh, that I purchased which were a bit more expensive I don't think you can see but it's, oh, I'll tell you what I can do I have a a way of showing that to you. I have a micrometer here. Or, uh, well, vernier calipers, I believe it's called. Um, if I switch that on, zero. Well, I thought I could. It would appear. These were dropped a couple of days ago, so it's quite possible that it's damaged them. Yeah, it does look that way. Oops, they weren't particularly expensive. So, oh, there we go. <coughs> no. Yeah, I don't know how well I can trust these. No. I was going to try and measure them, but. I think I think this is damaged beyond repair. Uh, forget that then. Put that down there. Okay. Um, but essentially, I don't know if you can see, but the the wires that come out of these that were with the kit are considerably thinner than the ones that um, I traditionally have purchased. These ones with thicker wires. Um, I don't have any problem getting these into breadboard, but these tend to collapse as you're pushing them in, which is uh, unfortunate. Anyway, doesn't matter for this, the purposes of this exercise. So let's have a look. Okay, so I probably want to just bend those about, about there. set through lovely now they all a bit higgledy piggledy so 
normally I would try and make sure they were all oriented in the same direction uh, but because they're all a bit higgledy piggledy that might not be so easy but uh, we'll see what we can do okay that's two of them in and is that in that right direction We'll do. Yeah, oops, it's poking out. We'll do this one next to it. And then make sure that those are pointing in the same direction. When I say pointing in the same direction, I mean the colours lining up in the same same way. And there's one up there. Okay. bend them I'm just going to rely on them being pushed down through the weight of the board um, and I'll just hope that that oh my tip's not very clean on my iron I've got the cheapest oldest crappiest soldering iron you can imagine uh, I think I got it uh, bought it from Maplin when I was at university which is 1990, so a long, long time ago, 28 years, 29 years ago now. Um, but it's, it's lasted. It's uh, never been anything that I've wanted to do with it that I can't. I don't think it's a particularly powerful one. Uh, it says on it 30 watts. Um, but I don't do any heavy duty work, so more than adequate for my needs. Well, I hope so, anyway. Because um, I'm a bit of a cheapskate, so I don't particularly want to buy a new one. Uh, hailing from Yorkshire, um, you'll probably, if you're British at least, you'll probably know that people from Yorkshire don't like spending money. So, if it lasts me another 28 years, I'll be more than happy. Uh, perhaps shouldn't be cutting so close to the this solder there, but it is what it is. I'm not doing this for commercial purposes. I'm not going to sell it, so as long as it works for me, I don't care. So that's all the resistors in place. What should we do next? I think we will do the diodes next. Now we need to be careful because diodes need to be oh, need to be put in a certain direction so that the current can flow. Okay, let's work out where these go. Um, boom, boom, boom. One N four zero zero seven. And quite usefully, they've marked there which side the white band on the diode has to go. So, I'm actually going to use these tweezers to bend the diode. That's it. Hmm, it's actually worked quite well. Okay, assuming that I've bent those in the correct spacing. Not perfect, but good enough do the same on this one and again and the band is the other way around on this one. Oh, that was perfect okay again I'm just going to rely on them being held in by the gravity uh, the force of the or weight of the board holding them in okay so those cut off the legs Okay, let's 
superb. Uh, so what should we put in next? I think we should probably put these little capacitors in. Or should we put the crystal in? Let's put the crystal in, shall we? Yes. Oh, oh that was my multimeter that I'd left on. It's just warning me that uh, it's going to switch itself off. I'm going to switch it off. I have forever doing that, leaving them on, um, but you know, these modern ones last forever on the batteries, so, and the batteries are so dirt cheap, so I'm not particularly bothered. <laughs> okay, so let's make sure we get this in the right place. This is 12 megahertz crystal, which is marked there, T1, timer one, um, normally Qs aren't they, crystals, but uh, there's no polarity on this crystal, so I can just drop it in there, turn it over, and solder it in place. Just put that under there. Let's keep it even. And put a little bit of solder. Oh, oh I'm making a mess here. There's a lot of solder on that, but it doesn't matter. I probably need to clean my. Uh, tip on my soldering iron. But, uh, yes, there's a big solder block, but it's not going across to any other uh, contacts, so that's fine. I'm not going to fret about it. Uh, famous last words, of course, when it stops working or doesn't start working at the end, uh, I'll be pulling my hair out. Okay, so I am going to do these uh, capacitors, these small capacitors next. So this one, I don't know if you can see this, but it's marked 3-0. Um, so I'm assuming that's just 30 picofarads. This one is 104, um, which suggests is that 100 picofarads. I don't know, it doesn't matter anyway. 104 is marked on the board, and these 230 is there. So these types of capacitors don't have any polarity so I can just stick them in any old way around. Oops. Or I can if I don't fly it across the room. Um, I'm going to do these two first. Uh, just a little touch solder. There we go, and the 104, Ooh, the holes seem very wide apart for that capacitor and I don't want to stretch it too much so I'm going to leave it at that, certainly won't be the tallest component on the board so it doesn't matter if it's stuck up a little bit. But I don't particularly want to stretch the legs because in those ceramic capacitors it can can uh, break the the body. But that's absolutely fine. Somebody should invent a machine that automatically trims these. Okay. What next? Well, I think. We shall what have we got left? Put the buttons in. Uh, the switches. Don't believe matters which way around I put the ah, maybe it does. I don't think it does. get them in. Oops. <laughs> Struggling to get them in. Oh, am I doing it wrong? Okay, let's 
one of the men uh, the second one I think if this is a clock which I'm assuming it is I think these are probably the buttons that control the settings so you know for changing the time maybe even changing the mode if it's got a, some other functions okay. these are pretty much, ah, a little bit bent I'm handling this a bit but uh, straighten that pin out they are proving a little bit troublesome to go in that doesn't mean that I'm putting them in the wrong way. Probably am. Probably all screaming at me that I'm doing it wrong. But I've committed. <laughs> if I have to pull them out and they're damaged, it's not a problem. I've got a bag full of them <laughs> that I purchased the other day. Oops. Going back now. I think that's right. You know how sometimes you just get a intuition for these things. Mind you, quite often wrong. You know, I'm no expert. Just a hobbyist who uh, makes many mistakes. But you learn from your mistakes, don't you? my reasoning anyway okay I think we'll put the um, I see holder in next I'm just kind of doing these in a random order now nothing particularly clever about what I'm doing but I'm just going to solder in each corner check it for flushness I mean other sides and if it's fine then continue to solder all the other connections yes and that looks absolutely fine uh, I didn't mention but I did check that the orientation was right so that the, the notch was at the right end um, just to make sure it lines up with the markings printing on the circuit board which means that when you come to put your chip in I see, yeah, putting it in in the right direction. Uh, my little piece of solder is about to run out. Oops, oops, what have I done there? Okay, don't think it will last to do all of the legs on this, but oops, my soldering iron is getting very. Drop something on the floor, a pair of tweezers, I think. Um, I didn't put very much water on my cleaning sponge, and it's not doing a very good job. But uh, we'll see what we can do. I'm not going to go do it now, put more on because we're nearly done. Mm, it did. It did last me to the end, but I'm not going to be able to get any more out of that without burning my fingers. In fact, what I should do is leave it in the pot. Right. Okay, that's that done. Um, I'm going to put the resistor network in next. Now, I'm assuming that the dot on the resistor, which indicates the common pin, corresponds to this squared off section here. That's the theory, um, and in fact that does make sense, yes, because the, the resistor network is for the display here, so if you look, the only thing above the resistor network is the display, and if we turn over, yes, this is the holes of the resistor network, and you can see that each of the traces is going up. Um, and the only trace that's going down, granted, it's going up before it goes down, 
is this particular one here, which if I turn it over, is the one at that end. So that one must be the ground or the common. So I'll drop the resistor package in. Um, just, I guess it's resting there. Just to clean the tip of my soldering iron again. I've got a little screwdriver here that's getting in the way of the, the lead and the soldering iron. Keeps rattling around. Okay, let's there we go. Do each end, and then the ones in between. My eyesight's not what it used to be. Back when I got this soldering iron, when I was much younger, be about 18, 19. Um, I would have had much better vision and um, I now have to wear reading glasses um, so that I can see what I'm doing for close-up work um, and what I've actually got on and I have several pairs in different strengths uh, so I've got some 3.5 uh, reading glasses uh, I've got some at one of these these are 1.5 and the ones I'm wearing are two and somewhere I've got a pair of 1.25s, yes there. Uh, and then I, I use all the different strengths for different things. Um, so the threes I will use if I'm doing really fine work and I need to um, really kind of zoom in, so to speak, whereas these twos that I've got on. I mean that I can sit at a comfortable dis my head's at a comfortable distance so I can see what I'm doing. Now all of these glasses uh, come from Poundland. Um, so not paid an awful lot of money for any of them. I think I think at one point they were one pound ninety nine each. Um, but I bought a pair not so long ago and I'm sure I only got charged a pound for them so obviously gone down in value if my memory is correct um, but yes yeah, so, so I've got a, a pair of every single size that they have available I believe and use them for very different things <laughs> okay right I should stop chatting and get on shouldn't I I'm gonna put this <sighs> this in next and it would suggest it's like that, so this center pin has to come out. So just bend that back a bit and slot that in. Now, don't want to push that down too far. So I just kind of what I usually do is push it down to um, well, it's like a little bit that sticks out of the, the leg. I can't show you now because I've pushed it in, but. Um, I don't know if that's the purpose of it, but uh, to stop it going any further, but that's what I use as my guide. Let me just stick it down until that is hitting the top of the PCB. And just, oops. Okay, my soldiers not as good as it used to be and I put that down to well lack of practice and eyesight but you know as long as it does the job it wouldn't win any awards but it doesn't have to does it okay so that's that in so we've not got much left now so let's do these larger capacitors so this is 10 microfarads and this one goes there now these ones do have polarity and I'm ah yes it does say plus there so the plus is the side opposite the, the uh, white line which is usually marked with a negative sign so let's stick that in I don't want to force it in again the holes are too wide apart for it to go all the way down and sit on the board but um, I don't want to force it and this one is a uh, hundred microfarads. Again, positive is on that side. 
negative is on that side. So, oops, kicking the dustbin under the desk. Let's move that. Okay, that one does go all the way down, so the, the spacing on the holes is equal to the spacing of the pins, which means it just slots straight down. It means that the capacitor is completely flush against the, the surface of the PCB and it looks much neater. What's going on here? Hmm, that was difficult. <laughs> I shouldn't really be spending a lot of time on Oh, putting a lot of heat into these electrolytic capacitors because it is liquid inside them and the heat can dry them up. So I'm told, but uh, needs must. Mm, yeah, my soldering on those is absolutely shambolic, but hey ho. Fingers crossed. Okay, so now we have left the sounder, the input connector. Now, is this mat? Yes, so this is mat positive on that side, and there's a positive there, so yes, positive there to positive there. I, and when I test it with the button cell, the CR2032, I don't know if you noticed, but it didn't buzz one way around and it did buzz the other way around. So it quite clearly is, uh, or does have polarity. Um, so I need to make sure that's in the right way, which I did. Okay, I'm not gonna remove that because they are very loud without the sticker on. It's amazing just how much of the sound that blocks. Okay, let's push that in there. This is the connector. Um, I'm going to use a bit of blue tack to keep that down there because it, it's not it's not staying down. I think it's tipping over. Right, let's. I might need to put a bit more heat into this because the legs are. Oh no, that's fine. I thought with the, the pins on the legs being much thicker, they would take a lot more heat, but and as I said earlier, my soldering iron's not the greatest, certainly not the most powerful, but that was absolutely fine. Uh, the chip we don't need to solder. Right, now there's gonna be a right and wrong way for this, isn't there? Now, assuming that these dots are indicating these dots, then that is the direction that it needs to be. Now the legs on this are very thin, so I don't want to damage them. And they're not lining up perfectly. So I need to be very careful. That's the bottom ones in, and the top ones, and they all look fine. And it seems to be staying fairly, fairly tight against there, so. Let's just pin corners again. Then we can check. Yes, that's flush. And we can just go through and do each of the pins. Well, I think we're nearly there. This is the last component we have to solder in. Uh, the chip's still to go in, but I can just slot into the can a little connector package. There we go. Okay, let's trim off the legs. Again, this is where I need my little machine inventing that does it automatically. I need something to just rub it against it and it'll trim all the legs off. I just go pew. Anyway. I shouldn't complain that somebody should invent it. I should invent it myself, shouldn't I? Anyway, um, let's stick. Oh, those legs just need rolling in quite a bit. It stood out quite far. 
And make sure I've got that right, yes. The dimples at the right end. And I just, I tend to just run my finger. That's it. We're in. Don't think we've got any bent pins. Looks perfect. So, assembled. Will it work? Moment of truth. So if you look here, it's saying DC 5 volts. Um, now, this is a screw connection. I haven't got one. If I'd, if I'd been clever, I would have prepared, wouldn't I? But I haven't. So what have we got? What have we got? I shall connect it to my battery supply. Have I got... Ah, I know what I've got. I know what I've got. Um, I will just have to assemble it because I've had it in pieces. Uh, this is just a very cheap um, battery power pack from, again, Poundland. There's a running theme here, isn't there? I told you the Yorkshiremen were very tight. Um, but, <laughs> uh, oops, forget that in. All right. Um, but this is, I think, again, this was only a pound. Uh, I mean, it's absolute garbage. The selling it is meant to be 1,200 milliamp hours, but it's not. It's nowhere near that. But uh, it'll be good enough for what, what we're doing here. Um, I did it apart to see if I could replace the cell with a another that I've got of the similar size but uh, we can worry about that later all right no that's not going to work is it because I need I don't think I've got a lead that will work oh yes so I've got a USB lead here with the the end shaved off I've no idea if this is charged I think it is. Um, and I'm assuming that the white is negative, red is positive. Let's just check that with the multimeter. We'll bring in the one that's got the clips on the end. So put that there. You should be able to see that. And just put these clips on. That's on the plastic so that's not going to register anything is it and that one there and what have we got that's pretty good to me 5.08 volts superb right here let's try and make these a little bit better in fact what if I was being clever I'd tin them wouldn't I let's do that just bring me this in Gonna do something, do it properly. Oh. I'll make a mess of it. That's a bit stupid. But my fingers. Oh, I'm making an absolute mess of this. It's the wires in here are just so fine and I'd been messing around with them earlier so oh, buggerations it's absolute garbage but whatever I'm sure it'll work <laughs> right let's unscrew these contacts so it suggests feels loose so it's suggesting that the positive is at the bottom I'm assuming the red's the positive. And oh, I saw something light up then. I'm just going to cut the end off that. Let the solder's balled up. So I'm going to screw that. Do one at a time. It'll be much easier. Put that one in. Did we hear something? Good sign. Completely dead. Right. <laughs> Let's move the thing there. Okay. So 
first of all, let's check that we've got some voltage on that connector because it doesn't look it's a bit wobbly. I'm sure it's soldered in properly. Yeah, I think it's just the, the green bit, the plastic casing's a bit wobbly. So, okay, we're on voltage. Yes, we've got five volts there. Okay, so it did light up, didn't it? Hmm, could have had three volts there. Okay, so let's turn it over and see. Stop tracing. So that's so that was. That's ground. So we've got five volts there, yeah. Five volts there. Okay. So it was five volts, wasn't it? Yes. Did come on. So let's take that out and plug it back in. No, it's not doing anything, is it? Okay. It's not, no. Pressing any of the buttons do anything? Press them together. Okay, so where to begin troubleshooting lies? I think we need to look up what the chip is. Well, I'm going to leave it there anyway. What I'll do is I will look up what the chip is and get the print out the data sheet for it and that will give us a clue as to what we should be seeing happening on the board and then we can use that to diagnose the errors but I can do that in another video okay thank you very much goodbye